<laughs> All right, we got to talk about this because this has become a very big deal. Uh-huh. Uh, restaurants against a certain TV station. Mm-hmm. We won't name any names, but it rhymes with Channel Blue. <laughs> uh, one of the reporters there decided to take it upon themselves to do some hardcore investigative reporting yes. on restaurants in town that have had health violations. Or they're not. Or health code violations. Yeah, well, not that they've had past violations, but they wanted, they, I guess, went and. St- to some random restaurants and did their own investigations. Sure. As they, 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 do, they do this frequently. They do it all over the country. Happens mm-hmm. all the time. Unfortunately, even if it's a small, you know, a small thing, they have put it under the moniker Dirty Dining, yeah. which is the name of the segment. And Mike, you've actually read more about this, about some of the, like, some of them had like nine violations or seven violations or, or six violations Kind of explain what what you saw when you read the investigation. You saw it that some of them were just pretty minor. Right, right. Like not having your food handler's card on your person um, is a violation. Oh, I didn't okay. know whether you needed a card. Uh, it, you bartenders even need food handler's cards because we squeeze limes into drinks. Oh, okay. So I didn't um, know that. And we have to have all of that. We have to have our uh, bartenders have to have their their Tams or Tips card on them at all times. So okay. not but, necessarily but having your Tams or Tips card doesn't. Make you a dirty dining or a food establishment. Card. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, it's not a qualifier. Spitting your food or anything like that, or there's rats running around. So I, I don't think that the title of the segment was fair at all, or, or however it was written, because a, a lot of the violations weren't indicative of actual what what would be considered dirty dining. Yeah, like there's stuff in your food, insects and mm-hmm. things like that. Yeah. Well, we have an investigation team here on the KFAT Morning Chaos. And we found some restaurants in town that legitimately have some dirty dining and, and, and some issues. Um, and we also found commercials for them. So uh, here's one of them. This one is uh, Chester Chester's Glacier Grill. All right, Chester, here we go. Just take it from the top. Hi, I'm Chester. <laughs> um, so, you know, this used to be a triple X video shop, but uh, yeah, the internet kind of changed that. So, you know, we thought a grill would be a good idea. Yeah, Chester, let's not mention the porn shop. Just talk about the grill, okay? Take two. Hi. <laughs> so, Chester's Glacier Grill is a great place to visit. The floors are still kind of sticky in the peep show rooms. Wait, I mean, the private dining booth, so. Chester, n- stop. Just tell us about the menu, okay? Take three. Well, so we used to have a grill here anyway because Donna the Dominatrix used to hold our clients' hands over the hot stove. Some of the food fetish people would watch food porn and beat each other with salami. (laughs) The video surveillance cameras were for the voyeurs, but it makes for really safe dining. Chester's Glacier Grill, where you can't beat their meat. Oh, wow. <laughs> what a horrible restaurant. Wow, I don't want to eat there. I like how that restaurant did not give its location, really. <laughs> we know where it's at. <laughs> <laughs> we do know where it's at. <laughs> oh, that is horrendous. All right. let's. Uh, here's another one. Um, this is a roadkill cafe that we uh, investigated and found to have some issues. Waste not, want not. That's the motto here at Roadkill Cafe. Why discard a perfectly good carcass? At the Roadkill Cafe, we take going green to the next level. Recycling, repurpose, and reuse. Don't let street meat go to waste. Come on down and have a taste. Our menu includes coon cobbler, porcupine pot stickers, squirrel kebab, and everyone's favorite, moose meatloaf. The dead bull or cow carcass is grilled fresh on the big rig motor right after it's hit in the street to preserve that freshly slaughtered taste. This week at the Roadkill Cafe features mystery street meat. Could be an Arctic fox, could be a Pomeranian. We don't know, but boy, is it tasty. Bring in your own Roadkill and we'll pull it from your grill and put it on ours. The Roadkill Cafe, just off the Parks Highway. And if there's any place you're going to find good dead roadkill, it's going to be the Parks Highway. I agree. A <laughs> couple of restaurants there <laughs> and whatnot. K Fat Low. Oh yeah, I wanted to say something about that dirty dining really quick. Yeah. You know what? I went, my son came to visit me, and I decided we should eat at something local, just, you know, just the Anchorage restaurant. We went to the hospital, and you know how they put chips in the basket? 
Yeah. But when I was eating the chips, I looked, and I noticed something bright pink, and it was a blow pop, a chewed up blow pop, but they're still on a stick. Oh, that's gross. So a lot of restaurants that should have made that list aren't on that list because I eat out all the time, and some of these restaurants are just, I look at the bathroom, and if that bathroom is disgusting, that kind of tells you what it's probably like in the kitchen. Did you eat the blow pop? <laughs> what, what flavor no. was it? Come on, you were all thinking it. You were all thinking it. I no. just asked it. Okay. I, all right. I didn't even know they had salsa flavored blow pops. <laughs> no, it was like, I, it was just so disgusting. It was just. I hear you. The dirtiest thing ever. Well, and that, but that's the thing, too, is who knows? Some stupid little kid might have done it. It wasn't them necessarily. And that's one of the things. I mean, if there's a track record. Of, of offenses, that's one thing, but, you know, there's just, there's so much more to the story, and unfortunately for a restaurant, I mean, you know, there's a lot of things to follow up with, which is, you know, which is good, because we need to be safe, but, you know, it's tough. Some, I mean, some stupid kid threw that little blow pop in there. Right. And, you know, it wasn't their fault. They just didn't see it. Some kid did it. I can think of worse restaurants. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, that's right. This is a horrible restaurant that uh, the... KFED investigation team found and also found a commercial for that you need to stay away from. Hi, I'm Squirts, the official mascot of the Alaska House of Salmonella. At this restaurant, we don't make a lot of promises. We don't promise you a tasty meal at a reasonable price. We don't promise that our cooks and servers bathe on a regular basis or even at all. We don't guarantee that your kids won't get booze in their sippy cups instead of apple juice. And we certainly don't claim to cook your food properly. But we do promise that after eating at this establishment, you will go through a horrible episode of vomiting and diarrhea. And in less than two weeks, you'll be 20 pounds lighter. That is the Alaska House of Salmonella promise to you. That's the Alaska House of Salmonella. Come on down and tell them Squirt sent you. 